Greetings, greetings, greetings and salutations, one and all. I want to welcome you all to the night shift. How you doing? It's a real talk night. Inviting you to call up your friends, tell your friends. We're on live and in living color right now. <laughs> Kicking his off tonight with the sound of Kerwin the boy. Kerwin the boys. <laughs> Live up your life. If I had to come out of my car and bust a dance, I go dance, I go dance, I go dance, I go dance. Me not give bad energy a chance, I go dance, I go dance, I go dance. I love my party. Up and live like never before. Life is too short to join, you know. Oh, yo, yo. When it's a game, I'm running out. People don't even know what they're talking about. We really, really going to see again. I know soon we go party. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter You're bitter, you're bitter Your heart black like your soul Cause you're bitter You're bitter, you're bitter But life is a beautiful thing Every day I jump and I sing Only vibes I bring My life is a beautiful thing I love the life that I live in Don't tell me how I live in Things might be hard but I drill in And I work in, I work in God bless you, Willie. The sound of Kerwin, the boys. Don't tell me how I live it. It's called Live Up Your Life. Yeah, I want to say big up to each and everyone locked in right now on the Night Shift to DJ Kevin Stew. Those on Tune in Radio on the Night Shift to DJ Kevin Stew. To get up and live like ne- yeah, man, that's the channel name. Life is too short. If you're looking for it on Tune In. Oh, yo, yo. I want to say big up to those who are locked in on NIE Radio. New Jersey, live and in living color. I want to say big up to those who are locked in on the Foundation Radio Network, ClintonLindsay.com. Those on PEMGTV.com, much love to you. So if you're locked in on Facebook Live, welcome, welcome, welcome. And of course, those who are here at the home of the night shift to DJ Kevin Stew, KevinStew.com. So glad to have you. Couldn't do it without you. You have my word, I wouldn't even try. It's me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You're bitter. You're bitter? Your heart black like your soul, cause you're bitter. Why you bitter? Because you see me on social media. Don't bitter because of that. Come on now. Time to get up and live like never before. Life is too short. Wanna say big ups to my segment sponsor, Paul C Media Group. 
When being in the moment is priceless, get him a call. What can I do for you? Everything you see here on KevinStew.com and more. We go party, yeah. They'll take your videos, photos, streaming your ads. You have a wedding, a graduation, a funeral, a seminar, a party, you name it. You want to stream something live on a secure platform? Your website or theirs. Get them a call. 754-999-1140. That's the 754-999-1140. Or you can check them out online. PulseEMG.com. Thank you, Paul C Media. Those of you that are locked in on, on Facebook Live, do remember it's a segment broadcast. But life is a beautiful thing. So don't get uh, too comfortable. Only vibes I bring. The life is a beautiful thing. But you are invited to use the link that is pinned in the comment section. It goes to kevinstew.com. Yeah man, it's where you can jump into the stew pot and be interactive. For those of you wondering what a stew pot is, it's what others call a chat room. But because we're fancy on kevinstew.com, we call it the stew pot. It's where we... Invite you to just come on in. You can remain anonymous. You can give your name and be directly interactive. It's a judgment free zone over there on kevinstew.com. You are encouraged to have acceptance through enlightenment there. So come on in. Let's be a part of this tonight. Yeah man, all of you live up your life. Live up your life, live up your life. Blast me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Tonight, we're going forward in faith. Like your soul, cause you're bitter. You're bitter, you're bitter. But life is a beautiful thing. No, of course. Jump on and sing. There's some that ask the question, what is faith? Beautiful thing. I love the life that I live in. Well, according to an article by Jam, J- not John, but Jim Hafel, God bless you, Willie. on the website lifehopeandthetruth.com, it faith is trust, assurance, and confidence in God. Living faith is shown by service and obedience to God. Uh, and the question is. How can we increase our faith? So, for those who don't believe in God, then it is whichever deity they sub- subscribe to. Yahweh, Yeshua, Allah, Buddha, uh, Rasta, um, you know, whomever it is. And, and I'm, I'm not judging anyone. I'm not saying any one religion is right. I'm not saying anything like that. Because it's not my place to say it. Now, if you want to go ahead and say it, that's on you. Not me. So, you can also, I also invite you to participate tonight by phone. You can call, you can text, you can WhatsApp, you can Telegram, wherever you are in the world. The number is the same. 773-789-STEW That's 773-789-7839 One more time 773-789-7839 Where do you stand on the issue of faith? What is your belief about faith? The expression just have faith It will work out is used by people to encourage and comfort someone facing serious problems or stressful situations. But just what is faith, as described in the Bible, and does it really work? In the New Testament, the English word faith is used to translate the Greek word pistis. The New Strong's Expanded Dictionary of Bible Words says, 
pistis is used of belief with the predominant idea of trust or confidence whether in god or in christ springing from faith in the in the same faith means trust confidence assur assurance and belief the bible also defines pistis in hebrews 11 verse verse 1 now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen many of us if not all of us have heard this at some point in time in our lives faith is a substance of assurance of things that we hope for but have not yet received faith or confidence belief trust is also our evidence of that which is not seen the invisible spiritual things faith comes from a prayer um, before a prayer is answered or before an individual has received what he or she has requested from God if we have received what we what we asked for then faith is not needed now before I go any further the what is mentioned one of the things that is mentioned in this is the invisible spiritual things now i don't know how many of our listeners tonight are from the caribbean where we would grow up hearing ghost stories or in my case dopey stories now <laughs> we were told also that we shouldn't believe these stories yet we go to church and those who go to christian churches like as as i did um growing up we hear of just this and and it is mentioned here again in the invisible spiritual things so if we're not to believe in ghosts why then should we believe in spiritual things i don't know maybe um some of my my more learned theologians that are out there can help me with that one and it's not to say that religion is is wrong and the teachings of religion is is to be questioned like that to say they're wrong but it's just to give answers and assurances to people that have questions so what is faith an example of this definition is found in matthew 9 27 to 30 where two blind men came to jesus and asked him to heal them Jesus first asked them, do you believe that I am able to do this? And their reply was, yes. Then he touched their eyes saying, according to your faith, let it be to you. And their eyes were opened. Their faith and assurance that Jesus could give them sight was a, subst was a substance or reality they hoped for. It also gave them the evidence of our, our trust that they would receive what they asked for they believed that is um they had faith in advance that it was going to happen it would be done so they're waiting for it they're waiting for it they asked for it and they got it was it as a result of jesus in the story or was it a result of their faith what was it that gave them sight another example is that of daniel's three friends who refused to bow down to king nebuchadnezzar um the bow down to his image of gold and those who refused to bow to the image were threatened to be thrown into a fire pit while still alive the three young jewish men shadrach meshach and abed nico um I, I want to make sure that y'all catch that last one 
it's not a bendigo as as I grew up knowing it as. Blessings, G. Cole. Much love to you, bro. But Abednego, um, they refused to bow down to this image of, um, and they told King Nebuchadnezzar just that. And they said, if that is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand. O king, they said, but if not, let it be known to you that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. Now the story is in Daniel um, 3, 17 to 18, and it goes on and tells a story. They did not know in advance how God would deliver them from the fire furnace, whether at that time by saving their physical lives or later in the resurrection. They believed in something that they knew not of. Their faith or trust was a substance of what they hoped for, and it was evidence of which was not yet received. Um, yeah, Neil, it's, 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 a, it's a Jamaican pronunciation, <laughs> like flim, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, welcome, bro. I'm chatting with you now in a minute. We need to link up. So, their faith or trust was built on serving God and obeying his command, His commandments. They believed God would deliver them because they obeyed his commandments and did not bow down to worship any other gods. Now, of course, this is the story as we know it coming out of the Bible, right? And although the Bible is not the oldest religious book that there is because Christianity is not the oldest religion there is. This is the story that most of the English speaking populace would would be able to resonate with because those from those English speaking countries were introduced to Christianity and this is what they this is what we know. But let's think about this for a moment. If we go back to early Africa, prior to Christianity, is it to say that anyone that was not introduced to Christianity did not have faith? Or is it to say that they didn't need to have faith because what they did was as they believed and as they wished, they worked towards it and it materialized or they made it materialize. Or could it even be, again, so maybe far-fetched? Maybe it is just something that we never really gave much thought to. Could it be that we, human beings, have the power within ourselves to make things that we wish for manifest? Hmm. Things that make you do just that. Go, hmm. Now, there's also a saying that faith without work is dead. So, this might speak to that thought that I just had. The Apostle James, the half-brother of Jesus Christ, used the example of Abraham, who had both faith and and works because he believed God and he obeyed what God commanded him to do. Was not Abraham, quote, our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Did you see the faith was working together with his works and by works faith was made perfect? James 2, 21-22 Real faith is more than just believing in God alone. It, in, it includes acting on that faith in one's life by serving God and obeying his commandments. So, again, for those who are not familiar with God, for those whom, if, if you decide to go on a journey out to some remote place where... Christianity has not been introduced. What of these people? 
because chances are they do have rituals a lot of the what we consider um spiritual practices by in some cultures in 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 the caribbean we know of voodoo where did that come from did did they just make it up and considering that voodoo you don't only find it in the caribbean but you also find it in the united states in places like louisiana that has ties to france however there are a lot of africans who were taken into louisiana by way of the slave trade so these africans were really haitians because of the french connection taken from haiti into louisiana because the french owned louisiana and the united states bought it from the french but these individuals were taken from africa in the slave trade so voodoo is in louisiana voodoo is in haiti voodoo is across the caribbean in various countries and in various languages or in jamaica we call it obia it is a spiritual practice does this happen by way of faith also because the individual that is asking the voodoo priest or the obia worker or the 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 spiritual worker spiritualist whatever you want to call him is believing in this individual that whatever it is that they're going to be interceding on their behalf for will happen so does faith only work when it comes to things of the christian nature or is it something that is only religious or those that are not of any particular faith being religious connection can have what this thing that we know as faith and whatever it is that they wish for whatever it is they desire whatever it is that they may be even praying for though it may not be praying to god as we know him in christianity that that what they're expressing is faith could it be some may argue that james is teaching that we should obey the command commandments of god is teaching that we are saved by works that is not the case according to this article the apostle paul makes this clear when he says for by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of god not of works lest anyone should boast so it is not that anyone did anything to make that thing materialize but it was given and already placed there you just walked into it at that point in time so it was predestined but you just realized that you wanted it and then it happened is that what i am to interpret that as paul clearly understood and wrote that no one could earn salvation and faith and that faith itself is is, is a gift from god yet in the very next verse he went on to say that we are god's workmanship created in christ jesus for god's work which god prepared beforehand that we should walk in them that is in verse 10 now like james paul knew living faith would be accompanied by service and obedience to god and his laws and paul wrote in romans three thirty one, do we then make void the law through faith certainly not on the contrary we establish the law so then we go back to thinking some more geez going back even to the beginning of the bible where the creation story is given there is that little bit that says god said let us make man in our image well this has been a point of much discussion where the question is okay who is this us 
And who is it that God is talking to? About making man. And if God made man in that us image, then did he make man with the same capabilities that he had, he, she, God had, and the rest of them in this us? Because as a child, that is how I got the story. God said, let us make man. And in fact, as a child, I got as God said, you know, I'm going to make man or God made Adam and Eve. And that was it. But it is written as let us make man. Who is the us? And what were these men made with? And as it is explained here, it says, um, God, man was created as God's workmanship. Okay. To worship God. But not everybody knows that God exists. So if God made man to recognize that he is there and to worship God, he, she, then everybody should know that God exists. But it is only those of the Christian faith or those that use the Bible that, knows of, that know of a God. Again, things that make you go, hmm, not bashing any religion, religion, not bashing Christianity, just asking a few questions and trying to figure out how this faith thing really work and what it really is. Now, there's also the question of belief that comes into play. So, is there a difference between faith and belief? And many in Christianity today use both words interchangeably. But the article continues and says, is there a difference between these words in the Bible? And generally, they are synonymous and sometimes they are translated from the same Greek word. And actually, the only time the word belief appears in the New King James Version of the Bible is translated from pistis, the word for faith. Now, this is one of the other things that, that, that has caused me to ask questions. Throughout my church-going life, I've heard that the Bible was translated. The English language is, is, is limited because some of the words that are being used in Greek they don't have an actual translation in English. So, in that respect, the English language is limited. So then, there's the association given to certain words for them to be synonymous. But, should that really be the case? Anyway, let me continue and, and, and give you this information before we take our break and say goodbye to those on Facebook Live. The word believe can carry a different shade of meaning. The Apostle James wrote in his epistle about what he called dead faith. And this is when one believes in God but does not obey his commands or her commands. You know, that, that is also the debate. You know, is God a man or a woman? But God said, let us create man in our image. And he created both man and woman. Yeah, man was created first. but Or so it was said in the story that we got. Anyway, James wrote, You believe that there is one God. You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. But you want to know, O oh foolish man, that faith without works is dead. And this is in James 2, 19 to 20. The emphasis being placed on dead. Here, believe is translated from a related Greek word, pisteuo, pisteuo, P-I-S-T-E-U-O. And James contrasts simple belief with living faith. 
So here it is again, a different word. You have pistis and now you have pisteu. Pisteuo. And so now here you go thinking, boy, hmm, how does this work? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand the struggle, Neil. I understand the struggle. <laughs> um, as Christians, the article goes on to say, we must strive for living faith. But before I, I before even going there, let me let me say this. Here it is: two different words. Yeah, they may have the same root, but two different words. Do they have two different meanings? Because was there someone who could explain Greek in English? there as a part of the translation or was there someone that just spoke english that had a basic understanding of greek that translated it to english how did that work we don't know so belief in god demonstrated by good works according to his laws and commandments is basically what living faith is and if we simply believe in Jesus Christ, believe that God exists and believe that he is a creator, then we're on the same level of belief as the demons. Okay. Or is it that they're on the same level of belief as us? Um, hey, Mish, how you doing? But if our belief in these things inspires us to be, to be obedient to God and changes the way we live our life, then... We truly have faith and will be considered faithful if we consistently increase or grow in our relationship with God. Well, I guess you need to have the faith and believe that God exists for you to have this relationship with God and to follow the commandments and then do the works. And But the one that stops for a moment and says, wait, but do we have proof that there is a God outside of this Bible? Then here comes the argument. Do you have faith? If your answer is yes, then there is a God. If their answer is no, then you don't believe in God and you are evil and you are blaspheming and you are whatever else that is tossed in your direction. Um, so good question, 2062. How do we take this translation based on someone else's observation of what the ink it means of what they think it means yeah. yeah that's 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 another question how <laughs> and and we have all right to struggle with asking these questions but here is one of the issues that i have with some churches you ask a question like this and it causes problems. They're telling you that you need prayers and we need to intercede on your behalf and we need to take you to the altar and sprinkle you with holy water and rub you down with anointed oil because you are possessed and we need to pray the demon out of you because you're asking silly questions. Are you asking questions that are contriving and causing conflict and division in the church? Well, Hospitals don't need well people to function. They need sick people. So those that go to church, wouldn't they be the ones that are seeking the knowledge? And wouldn't be the ones, wouldn't it be the ones that are in the church, the ones that have the knowledge to provide that information? So when you come asking questions like this, why are you going to be read out? <sighs> I can only scratch my head. Because these are the things that happen. So at what point then does your faith stand out? Is your faith the thing that you go in with asking the questions to get you some clarity so that you can believe? Or is your faith the thing that just leaves you to go blindly and accept whatever it is that you're told by someone else who I guess is having faith on your behalf? Because this whole Christianity thing as far as I know, is a personal walk with God. So it's between me and my God. And we work accordingly. Now, 
do you get the opportunity to tell me that the way I am doing it is wrong? The good book said, let us create man in our image. So you were created and I were, was created by the same creator. If that is the case, then we are the same. But we just have different questions. It's like the ten blind men describing the elephant. Right? Um, how shameful to ask a question that the authorities have no answer for. It is shameful, 2062, indeed. And... Um, it, me giving people the idea that they should ask such a question it, it makes me even more shameful because i'm coming out here on this platform on on, on several platforms and and saying hey <laughs> somebody answer me this question and if you can answer me go ask the people that have the answer and come back and tell me Seven seven three seven eight nine. Stu is the number that gets you in touch. Seven seven three seven eight nine seven eight three nine. Let me put it up on the screen again for those of you that are watching. Seven seven three seven eight nine seven eight three nine. We're gonna take a break, and when we come back, we we'll look at this. There's a little bit more of in, in information on in this article, and they speak to God gives faith to those who seek it, and actually, let me go ahead and address this now because it's not a whole lot. So faith is increased by drawing closer to God through prayer and the study of his word, the Bible. Paul told the Philippians to be anxious for nothing. Do not worry, basically. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be no made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds through Jesus Christ. In other words, have blind faith. You know, don't worry about it. You know, just know that whatever it is you're going through will work out. Okay, we can do that. Now, the members of the Church of God in Philippi believed God's word, and they obeyed his commandments. As, as they listened and followed Paul's instruction on giving their cares to God in believing prayer, their faith, belief and trust, that is, was increased. So, the more you do something, the better you get at it, right? So, the more you pump weights, the stronger you get their faith then increases because they're doing it over and over and over again. So they're going to believe a little bit more. Another way faith is increased is by reading or hearing examples of faith in the Bible publicly expounded. And this is mentioned in Romans 10, 17, which goes, So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. All right, so it's a whole storytelling thing. And that's, hey, we grew up hearing the stories of in the Bible, and that is what we believed, and that is how we built our faith. And that's how many churches expanded throughout the world because the word was shared. And you get someone charismatic enough that presenting the word in a nice little bow and it makes it believable enough. And here you get followers. Don't understand, this goes both ways. Because that charismatic leader is the one that led people down to Guyana and everybody drink the Kool-Aid. Remember that? Yeah. So, the very same people that lead the cults are no different from those that lead the religions. Which led me to ask a question a few weeks ago, what's the difference between a religion and a cult? But hey, if you don't have the answer, cool. You do your research, I did mine. I presented on that. You can look it up in the archives. It's on YouTube, it's on the podcast, both the same name, The Night Shift with DJ Kevin Stew. You can give me your feedback. Now, today, we have a complete word of God in many different translations. The Bible is God's inspired word to mankind. That's what we have always been told. When we read the Bible, our faith, which is our confidence and assurance, in God and Jesus Christ to answer our prayers and uh, we, we have that increase and it brings us to impossible situations it brings us through possible situation impossible situations and, and the number of times that that happens that increases but is it really because of reading the Bible or is it just because we had faith we believed that we would get through it so then what is faith? According to this article in summary on life, hope, and, tru and truth.com, faith is trust, assurance, and confidence in God and Jesus Christ. Living in faith is not just believing that God exists. 
It is demonstrated by one's service and obedience to God. God will increase our faith if we fervently ask him for it and seek to draw closer to him in prayer and, and, and the reading of his word. Now, basically, <laughs> yeah, you know what? 2062, that's a good point. It sounds like Bob Marley's song, Three Little Birds. Don't worry about a thing. Because every little thing is going to be all right. So, is it to say then that because of Bob's upbringing, prior to Rastafarianism, that he has been taught this and that has led him to the point where he could pen the words, don't worry about a thing. He penned this in faith. And it is the 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 demonstration of faith or the, the understanding of faith put to music and immortalized through the words of Bob Marley. Hmm. What then do we have there? We're going to take a quick little break. And I, I, I believe that you all will come back and join me when we come back from the break. I, I have faith that you will. Those of you on Facebook Live, I have faith that you will jump on over to KevinStew.com. Now, whether or not you do, I have faith that you will. Come on over, be a part of the discussion. Call me up and, and, and let me hear your views. 773-789 Stu. Um, oh, geez. We're well into um, Healing Heavenly Hand segment of the broadcast. Um, thank you to this current spon segment sponsor. And I'll do, I will mention them when we come back from this quick break. We'll be right back. I've gone so far over. We'll be right back. Pulse Media Group, innovative streaming and recording, has done it again. A new way to get your business in full view of your neighborhood consumer through AdShare TV. It's available in your neighborhood today. It's easy. Just call us. 754-999-6020 Become a host today and place a TV monitor in a strategic location so it's easy to see. Get a one minute video ad or longer that plays anywhere in our network. Can't be a host? No problem. For a few dollars, we'll run your 30 second video ad. A host can run announcement specials like buy one get one free or discount ads. Let's turn your flyers into a 30 second video with music or a voiceover or let us create and run your video ad with a spokesperson. Take advantage of our early enrollment discount. Join us today. Your ad will be seen at least 30 times per day in your AdShare TV neighborhood. It's easy. Just call us. 754-999-6020. AdShare TV, part of Pulsing Media Group. Reggae Global Entertainment presents the brand new self-titled album from Yushka with nine great songs. Oh, baby, let me love you. Oh, baby. Be grateful for life. Be grateful for life. Shake you down. Girl, I want to shake you What else can I do? What else can I do? Babe, come over. Baby, come over. My, my, my. It's our time. It's our time. You know I love you. For your love. I'm falling. I'm falling. In love again. Yishka. Nine great songs. Available on all streaming platforms. You sure look good tonight. Available now. Matthew 28, 19 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, 
With this in mind, and encouragement received during a South Florida media conference, The Church Links was birthed. The Church Links is an interdenominational worship service portal for churches, providing the tools to spread the word through technology in a cost-effective way. The Church Links www.dahchurchlinx.com Your links to worship and praise. I'm representing for DJ Kevin's Jew, working on the night shift, in the night shift radio show. Won't go changing like the weather, just to please the devil never. Will DJ Kevin's Jew sell his soul? That's a word and honor. We seem to represent a word and honor. It's the last year DJ Kevin's Jew. Oh, be standing before me, it big and it bold. Trying to test my faith, wanting to sell my soul. My vision is rising beyond control. It's like I'm losing myself, don't wanna sell my soul. It's such a difficult battle, can't fight it alone. So you intervene on try like you always do. Believe on me, oh child. Believe on me, oh child. From the hands of the enemies. The wicked hands of the enemy. Protect me, oh child. Protect me, oh child. Trying to destroy me, yeah. even trying to destroy me. Spiritual wickedness out there in iron places. So I stay close to Jah, give him praises. In my loan can tell me through this I'm a Gideon stages. Pick up my Bible, chant a song, read you to run a man. Give the devil a bay. Fill my destiny Ooh. and guarantee that you are, you will never fail me. Deliver me, oh child. Deliver me, oh child. Come the hands of the enemy, Jah. Wicked hands of the enemy. Protect me, oh child. Protect me, oh child. Protect me, oh child. Protect me, oh Protect me, oh child. 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 Protect me, I want to say thank you to my segment sponsor, Althea and her healing heavenly hands. Althea is utilizing massage therapist at Upper Out Abroad County, North Miami and South Palm Beach counties. Just give her a call, 954-655-9000. Or email her at thealater at att.net. That's T-H-E-A-L-A-T-E-R at att.net. Althea is a licensed massage therapist that comes to you. She brings her table, her oils, and over 20 years massage therapy experience. She only has one request outside of paying her. You get off her table and go sleep somewhere else when she's done. So intervene on try like you always do. Thank you, Althea. In the background, the sound of Ricky Dread working out today, Mar Shepherd. This track is called Deliverance. Protect me, Protect me, Them trying to destroy me. I see them trying to destroy me. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. So, tonight we're talking about faith. If you're just joining us, welcome. Those who were with us, thank you for sticking around. I had faith that you would. <laughs> so, um, we're talking about faith in our broadcast tonight on, on Real Talk. 
And according to Jeremy Sherman, um, PhD, MPP, he did an article a few years back on psychology today about faith. And the question is, what is it and who has it? Now, the philosopher, the article goes, the philosopher Richard Rorty talks about people's final vocabulary words. You know, final vocabulary, you know, that's it. Words and phrases that we use when we're done wondering about something. Like when you say, it is, or it just is, or because I said so. You know, those little final words. Think of that uh, pesky child who discovers that he can tie you in knots by asking a simple question. But why? After everything you say comes a but why? Now, when you're at the end of your exploratory rope, you'll employ final vocabulary to get him to stop. You'll say something like, look. I don't have all day or because I said so. You know, one of them the final vocabulary words or phrases. Now, in fact, you do have all day according to Jeremy, to Dr. Jeremy. But that's all you have. <laughs> Only 24 hours. And this is distributed over many questions and decisions you have to prioritize not just dismissing pesky children and their endless questions but dismissing all sorts of questions wonderings and doubts now the biggest social science trend of the last 50 years or so at the time is toward the acknowledgement of bounded rationality hmm yeah, famous words by mom, because I said so. <laughs> we can't reason our way through perfect decisions about everything. So we reason a bit and then draw conclusions. We might leap to conclusions, a leap of faith, so to speak, or creep slowly to them. But one way or another, we round up or down from the evidence to a conclusion. So... We can get on with whatever else makes demands on our day. Social scientists interpret these leaps of faith either as escape from rationality or simply a different level of rationality. It may very well just be the latter. There is no escaping reality, which at core is compassion as in ratios is a uh, better decision than that. You know, is this versus that a better decision? You know, that. So bounded rationality is therefore really rationality about where to allocate your rationality. I hope you got that. It is reasoning about whether more reasoning about something is worth the effort. So, a little time for reasoning, so much to reason about. We have to reason about whether more reasoning about a question is reasonable use of our attention. Where do you stand with your reasoning? So, you know, this is where the social psychologists sit in a circle and smoke because <laughs> it is crazy. When you get down to it, it's, it's kind of like much ado about nothing. Do we get worked up for nothing or do we work, get worked up because there is something in the nothing to be worked up about? Although at the end of the day, it's not really anything. Our conclusions made from our experiences are observations. Okay, so 2063, you are... Asking the question that the psychi psychologists and the psychiatrists and the social psychologists have pretty much, I believe, all and even um, some of the um, physiologists 
<coughs> sorry, have probably sat down and, and, and reasoned on for many a years. Is it our expectations? Is it our experiences or is it our observations? Well, at the end of the day, our observations are, we have taken on our observations as a part of our experiences because although we, there isn't enough time for us to make all our mistakes, we can learn from some others and then adapt, adapt them. So maybe it's a little bit of both. Because your experience, let's say you're a woman, you have given birth. I can only observe that happening or give observation to the evidence of that happening because it is there. Can I do it? No, I'm not equipped that way. So, but I can give birth to ideas and through those ideas I can put them, I can let something materialize. So I have then created and I guess in a sense given birth to something. You know, the, this broadcast, it became through my work. So here we are. Are you experiencing it or are you just observing it? You're doing a little bit of both. You're observing that I'm here presenting on it and you are experiencing it because you're here receiving it. So, your conclusion then ends up being whatever you decide that you're going to rest your laurels on from either of those occurrences, whether the experience or the observation. That's my take. Now, going back to this article in Psychology Today, when you decide that it isn't a reasonable use, you have lots of final vocabulary at your disposal. Ways of saying, I'm done thinking about this, include, we're done here, don't go there, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Get over it. That's not interesting. That's irrelevant. Why are you picking on me? Thank you for sharing. Nice weather we're having. It is what it is. And the one that we somehow always use. I just have faith. Which takes us back to our, our topic for the night. Now, the word faith is grade A final vocabulary. The ultimate way to stop wondering. Because faith is considered a virtue. Perhaps the highest virtue of all. And as such, I just have faith is a pro proudly virtuous way of saying you're done wondering. We don't feel or experience faith. We just have it. As though it's a permanent possession. Your faith is with you always. Not in waves of certainty amidst your doubts. But a conviction made and held once and for all. As final vocabulary. Faith is perhaps most useful when it is left vague and ill-defined. People often simply say, I have faith, without specifying what they have faith in. Positive, ill-defined, and without specifics, it can be used to stop wondering about anything. Makes sense, doesn't it? So, we all have faith in faith. We respect it. We defer to it. When friends say, I have faith, all but the pesciest among us are likely to stop questioning them and are at least lightening up 
on the questions. Now, according to Wikipedia, those who go the wiki way, faith is confidence or trust in a person, thing, deity, uh, or the doctrines or teachings of a religion or view. Example, having strong political faith. It can also be belief that is not based on proof. The word faith is often used as a substitute for hope, trust, or belief in religion. Faith often involves accepting claims about the character of a, of a deity, nature, or the universe. While some have argued that faith is opposed to reason, proponents of faith argue that the proper domain of faith concerns questions that cannot be settled by evidence. So, we just go with the whole idea that we don't need proof. And that will be that. So, as the article goes on, Dr. Jeremy says, From what I can tell, no questions can be settled by evidence. Evidence does not speak for itself. It must be interpreted. People deciding what is evidence for and how far to extrapolate from the evidence to a general certainty. <clears throat> Even if all of us agree that the evidence points a certain way, we must later come to a different conclusion. Even science that most stubbornly persists um, form of wondering never proves anything. It only comes to today's best guesses, to be beaten tomorrow perhaps by better guesses. See how that works? Dr. Jeremy goes on to say, to me then, bounded rationality isn't just a function of our limited time to wonder about things but uncertainties inherit in the universe. Inherent, sorry, in the universe. For example, no matter how much research you do today, you can't know with absolute certainty what year someone will die or what music will be at the top of the pop charts in 30 years. The answer isn't just blowing in the wind for you to chase down if you had the time. It's unknowable today by any evidence. Life is not a crossword puzzle with the answer sitting there at the back of the book. It is not like in the movies in which you can fast forward to see how it ends. When people say nobody is perfect, they often mean that given our bounded rationality, we make mistakes. But if we were smarter, or had more time, or tried harder, perfection would be possible. It's not like that. Nobody could be perfect. Even if we gathered all the available evidence, we couldn't settle decisions by means of it and always be right. It's, not, it's just not happening. So, to Dr. Jeremy, there's a leap of faith in every decision we make, and leap of faith is actually redundant. Since faith, whether moved towards swiftly or slowly, is ultimately a leap. A rounding up or rounding down of evidence, a leap from wandering still to not wandering anymore. We work from the evidence at hand to confidence in a bet we think will work. I love it. And work is the point of faith. So only so many hours in the day and we don't use them just for wondering, but for doing focused work. Since most things take concerted effort and time, we need to focus. Focus work is concentrated work. Work based on consistent bets on what will work. Now, without our leaps of faith, 
we are unfocused, unreliable, or effort to diffuse to yield anything of lasting value. Without faith, we would expend our energy every which way and never get anything done without the simple thing called faith. Faith constrains the directions our energy goes. It's like an, an engine cylinder's hardened walls, which focuses the otherwise omnidirectional gas combustion, so the piston moves straight in and out in one direction. Faith is like the insulation on circuits that keep electrons from sparking every which way, forcing them instead down a particular channel or channels. Faith is the river bank that keeps water flowing in only one direction, a force that can be used to generate electricity. We all have faith. Bets we live and work by. We should celebrate faith as a means to our ends, but not as an end in itself. And we should wonder more about faith, how it works, how much to have, where to direct it, and what happens when our faith conflicts, as they often do. So, where do we go when thinking about faith? Do we go to it as an absolute? Because, hey, if I have faith, then I don't need to have anything else. I want to do this and I must have faith that it will happen. If I don't, then it won't. Is that just the trust that it will? Is that the hope that it will? And here comes the, synonym, the, the synonyms again. At what point is there an absolute? Or like Dr. Jeremy Sherman said, there is no absolute. Again, it is up to you those of you listening to the sound of my voice are looking at me as we speak right now to know where you stand, where your faith lies. And, you know, again, I, I, I have more information and, and I'm going to take a quick break. And I want to touch on some more of the psychological side of this because the American psych the the um the American psychological psychological association also had an article um within the last mm, eleven years yeah this was about twenty ten yeah this was twenty ten um a reason to believe and. I want to touch on this also, and I want to look at the whole idea of the difference between faith and trust, and there's so much more to look at. But I'm going to take a quick break, and I'm going to look at some of this thing, about a reason to believe. This this article I found um, on APA.org, the American Psychological Association's website. And so, I invite you to stick around as we take this quick break and then come back and talk some more. And I, I, I thank Reggae Global Entertainment for sponsoring this segment. So, we're going to take this quick break and we'll be right back. When being in the moment is priceless, consider the ability to share that moment. If you can video it, you can broadcast it. And Pulse eMedia Group has the tools you need. Weddings, birthdays, funerals, graduations, church services, parties, seminars, you name it. 
Pulse eMedia Group can provide you with a secure medium controlled by you to broadcast your event. Contact us at www.pulseemediagroup.com for more information. Pulse eMedia Group, when being in the moment is priceless. Teddy Greaves Jr. with six brand new songs out now on his brand new EP, Teddy Greaves Jr. with songs you know and love like Can You Stop the Rain? Can you stop the rain? One Last Cry. Can't Get Over You. Wait Too Long. You and I. You and I. And One Last Cry, the acoustic version. Teddy Greaves Jr., now available on all major digital platforms. Teddy Greaves Jr. Making great music is one thing, sharing it with the world, that's another. Let the professionals at Reggae Global Entertainment help you to another level. Specializing in artist management, booking, public relations and marketing, and promotion. Reggae Global Entertainment can help you with event planning, websites, photography, and video production, press releases, legal services, and graphic design. They can even help you with music production so you can get the sound that you want every time. Call Reggae Global Entertainment at 954-804-8199. That's 804-8199. Or visit them online at reggaeglobalentertainment.com. Yes, yes, yes. Sakar Mantino, I'm making notes right now. You are locked in to DJ Kevin Stew on the night shift. It's a real life story. It's time to get going. No, real life story. Full time. Yeah. 12 a.m. when midnight starts. I mean, that with the midnight touch. Oh, slap down one light on cars. I got to reach it. I'm in a start to the million days. Me a work is a million ways Deal let me make a million steps cause I got to reach For me it in a life from a dream So my planet Wanna make more greens than trees for the planet Don't get me wrong, greet me, I stay from it But life short like 12 lines to a sonnet Hard for you achieve my mind can see That's why me a tough it out real concrete Goals in a life for your wants and needs You can't reach till you plant one seed That's why 12 a.m. when midnight starts I mean that with the midnight touch Oh, stop, no one light on cars I got to reach it I'm in the start of the million days But we are working some million ways Daily, me make a million steps, cause I got to reach it Problems from my chest, I'm feel like my would have bench press five Duty corner with a ring like S5 to the top, men I see no express line. Work hard, no wait till next time. If you are study for your test, I sell juice like that. I beg you, do your best, you can't lose like that. No, focus, not confused like that. I make the two ends meet like hands on a clock. What's it? 12 a.m., midnight start. I mean that with the midnight touch. Oh, slap down one light on cars. I got to reach it. I'm gonna start to the millions, eh? But we are working some millions, eh? Yeah, let me make a million steps, cause I got to meet you Real life story It's time to get going No, real life story Full time Yeah, yeah, yeah Your real life story It's time to get going No, real life story This is the sound of Denver Down I want to welcome you back to the broadcast The track is called 12 a.m. Also known as Reach It. I want to say thank you to Reggae Global Entertainment for sponsoring this segment of the broadcast. You heard in the ad, they'll act as your booking agents, your tour manager, handle your tour management, deal with your business registration, legal service referrals, music production, marketing and promotion, and so much more. You can get them a call, 954-804-8199. That's 954-804-8199. Or link them up on reggaeglobalentertainment.com. Bouncing in the background. 
the sound of Denver Downer. Track called 12 AM. So, according to the American Psychological Association, the religion may fill the human need for finding meaning, sparing us from existential angst, while also supporting social organization. Um, and this is according to what researchers say. Now, going back to Sigmund Freud. Some psychologists have characterized religious beliefs as pathological, seeing religion as a malignant social force that encourages irrational thoughts and ritualistic behaviors. Let's pause for a moment and go back a few weeks, a little over a month, maybe. To that broadcast where I asked the question, what is the difference between religion and a cult? Now, here we are, several weeks later, looking at faith. Only to learn that uh, some psychologists character characterize religious beliefs as pathological, <laughs> um, as a malignant social force as something that encourages irrational thoughts and ritualistic behaviors that's a definition of religion when you hear something like that you think of a cult so i digress and i go back to what the article says now psychologists doubts and those of countless others throughout history have curtailed religion's powerful hold on humans. Religion has survived and thrived for more than a hundred thousand years. It exists in every culture, with more than 85% of the world's population embracing some sort of religious belief. Researchers who study the psychology of neuros and neuroscience of religion are helping to explain why such beliefs are so enduring. They're finding that religion may, in fact, be a byproduct of the way our brains work. Growing from cognitive tendencies to seek order from chaos, to anthro anthropomorph anthropomorphize. I've, I've, I don't even know what that means. Let's, let's look up that meaning of that word. Anthropomorphize. Huh. Let's look it up real quick. Um... You know, search is our friend. It's the attribute human characteristics or a behavior or behavior to a god, animal, or object. Hmm. Anthropomorphism. Um, and maybe I need to look into that one day. So, going back, I, I do apologize. Finding that... Uh, Religion, in fact, is a byproduct of our way, the way our brains work, growing from cognitive tendencies to seek order from chaos. To anthropomorphize our environment and to believe the world, the world around us was created for our use. Religion has survived, they surmise, because it helped us form increasingly larger social groups held together by common beliefs. Well, yeah, church is, is, is one of the biggest social clubs that there is. If we're on the right track with this byproduct idea and the findings are really getting strong, it's hard to then build the case that religion is a pathology, says psychologist Justin Barrett, director of the Cognition, Religion and Theology Project in the Center for Anthropology and Mind at Oxford University. There is no one cognitive tendency that undergirds all our religious beliefs, says Barnett. Sorry, Barrett. It's really your basic garden variety cognitions that provide the impetus for religious beliefs. A common thread to those cognitions is that they lead us to see the world as a place with an intentional design created by someone or something. 
Young children, for example, tend to believe that even trivial aspects of the natural world were created with purpose. According to a series of studies by Boston University psychologist Deborah Kieleman, if you ask children why a group of rocks are pointy, for example, they say something like, it's so animals won't sit on them and break them. If you ask them why rivers exist, they say it's so we can go fishing. Adults also tend to search for meaning, particularly during times of uncertainty. A 2008 study in Science, Volume 322, Number 5898, by Jennifer Whitson and Adam Galinsky, found that people who were more likely to see patterns in a random display of dots if the researchers first primed them to feel that the participants had no control, the, this finding suggests that people are primed to see signs and patterns in the world around them. That's a conclusion of the researchers. Now, people also have a bias for believing in the supernatural, says Barrett. In his work, he finds that children as young as age three naturally attribute supernatural abilities and immortality to God, even if they've never been taught about God. And they tell elaborate stories about their lives before they were born, what Barrett calls pre-life. Now, don't mix that up with Red Fox's pre-life. Now, what we're showing is that our basic cognitive equipment biases us toward certain kinds of thinking and leads to thinking about a pre-life, an afterlife, gods, invisible beings that are doing things, themes common to most of the world's religions, says Barrett. Now, that basic equipment includes a memory system that appears to be ex exceptionally good at remembering the kinds of stories found in many religious texts. In particular, research has found that we most easily recall stories with some, but not too many, counterintuitive or supernatural elements. In one study published in 2006 in Cognitive Science, Scott Atron and Era... Noren Zion tested people's recall of concepts that ranged from intuitive, a uh, grazing cow, to just slightly counterintuitive, a cursing frog, to extremely counterintuitive, a squealing, flowering brick. Although people are more easily remembered the intuitive stories an hour after reading them, a week later, they were more likely to remember the slightly counterintuitive stories. I guess because they were so far-fetched. This finding held up both American college students and Maya villagers from the Mexican Yucatan, suggesting that stories with a few minimally counterintuitive elements, such as those found in many religious stories, are more easily remembered and presumably more readily transmitted from person to person. Now, that kind of makes sense. And it also puts into perspective how it is that so many remembers so many of the Bible stories because of that slightly counterintuitive thought. Now, that said, most researchers don't believe that cognitive tendencies that bias us towards religious belief evolved specifically for thinking about religion. Rather, they likely served other adaptive purposes. For example, because people are quick to believe that someone or something is behind even the most benign experiences, they may perceive the sound of the wind rustling leaves as a potential predator. In evolutionary terms, says Atron, it was probably better for us to mistakenly assume that the wind was a lion than to ignore the rustling and risk death. Hence our fight or flight kick in and we bolt. But this tendency also sets up to believe in an 
omnipresent God-like concept. Taken together, it's easy to see how these cognitive tendencies could allow our minds to create religious to re- create religions built on the idea of supernatural beings that watch over our lives, says Atran. Such research also supports the notion that religious thought is in many ways an unavoidable byproduct of the way our minds work. Psychologist Tom Plant hopes that view will, will help people to see themselves as more whole. We've had this long history of believing that the things of the spirit are in one camp and that science and technology are in another camp. And if anything, this work reiterates that we are whole people, the biological, psychological, social, cultural, and spiritual, they're all connected. And, you know, if you were to take out any one aspect of those things, I personally don't believe that we would still exist. Because you remove the psychological from the individual and you're just a shell. You remove the social and you're antisocial. Who are you interacting with? You probably don't exist anymore because nobody knows you're there. You remove the cultural and... You have no identity. You can't relate to a particular culture. Nobody can accept you. You can't fit in. So, they all work together. You definitely can't remove the biological because you're removing the person. The being. So, can we do without all these parts as a whole? No. We have to include them. And those among us that are are more learned in how to use the attributes of all of these moving parts together end up being more charismatic and then can present to us a, a scenario of something like that of a religious leader. Hence, your faith comes into play. And you say, well, you know, I was told to have faith because the story goes. The boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, were tossed into the fire furnace, and King Nebuchadnezzar put three in but saw four standing, and they were not burned. So, who was the fourth standing with them? And that's how the story goes. But I've only gotten that story out of the bible again the bible is not the oldest religious book nor is christianity the oldest religion so how does that story go in other religions and clearly we tend to remember that because it is so far-fetched no we can't remember what happened the other day on the news because it was an actual thing and though it may seem outlandish because it made the news we still can't remember it and have to refer to a news article or some archive somewhere to get the information take one of those away and we disrupt our basic human needs oh one of the characteristics one of the biological psychological social cultural and spiritual you take one away yeah so our hierarchy of needs speak to these things and as we get we meet one basic need we move on to the next and on to the next and on to the next until we have achieved it all and then we consider ourselves whole and complete and perfect we don't need anything else because now we're content we're content we're happy because all of our needs are met so we have the need for clothing for shelter for love for food for for um social connection these are all basic needs and if you have all of these being met to your requirements as you so desire them then we end up in a place of happiness don't we 
So where does our faith come into this? Do we have faith that we will achieve all of these and then we just decide that we're going to be happy at that point because they're going to come? Or do we wait until these things have materialized and, and have been realized that we decide that, hey, now we can be happy? Or do we just choose to be happy off the bat? And if you were paying attention to what I was saying, you notice I said we decided and we chose. The two are not the same. Something else that I have addressed before. And this now, and I hope, will encourage you to be intentional in your thought. Be intentional in your speaking. And be aware of what you're saying and what you're thinking and what you're experiencing. And so, going back to our topic of faith. Is it our faith that drives us? Is it our faith that makes things happen? Is it our belief? Is it our hope? Or is it just the fact that it was we are predestined to experience certain things and we're walking into our destiny. So no matter what we do, it will happen regardless. Whether we believe it or have faith in it or not. So where do you stand with your faith? If you decide today that you're not going to have faith anymore, does it mean then that you're just going to be wandering aimlessly and nothing will happen for you? Let's see how the individual who doesn't believe in a particular... Let's see how the atheist feels about it. Or is it that the atheist does, just does not believe that there is a God, but believes that there is something as faith? How does that work? Personally, I don't know. I don't know any atheists. I don't know if there are any listening... I, I do encourage you to call in and, and shed some light on the situation. 773-789-STU. 773-789-7839. I'll tell you once more. 773-789-7839. So, do we have more questions and answers? I hope so. Are we going to explore these questions? I pray so. Now, is that me having faith <laughs> or just believing that as curious beings, we're going to continue to find out more information for ourselves? So, before I jump into musical therapy, let me say this. This article on the American Psychological Association's website goes on to talk about the God spot. So neuroscience research supports the idea that the brain is primed to believe, says Jordan Grafman, director of the Cognitive Neuroscience Section at the National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke. This tendency, he says, is spread throughout the brain and probably arose from neural circuits developed for other uses. The idea that got a lot of attention several years ago that there is a God spot in the brain where religious thoughts and feelings arise has largely been rejected, says Grafman. Now, in 2009, Grafman published a, an fMRI study showing that religious thoughts activate the area of the brain involved in deciphering other people's emotions and intentions. The ability known as theory of mind. In the study of 40 people, published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, Grafman and his colleagues found that when they heard phrases such as God's will guides my acts and God protects one's lives, one's life, areas of the brain involved in theory of mind lit up. In a study published in 2009 in Social Cognitive Affective Neuroscience, a Danish team saw the same brain areas activate when religious participants prayed. Huh. So these results 
suggests that when people think about God, it's similar to thinking about any special authority figure, such as one's mother or father, says Grafman. In addition, he says, contemplation is not limited to religious thought. Although certain traditions like prayer or meditation may require selective kinds of thinking processes, in general, he believes, the brain uses the same circuits to think about and experience religion as it does to think about and handle any other thoughts or beliefs. Hmm. So, where then does that leave us on faith? Because if the same part of the brain, because we, we, we tend to leave the, the human aspect out of religion and just go straight spiritual and say it's a soul to soul connection. You're, let your spirit accept the spirit of the Lord and then we will be made whole. Because the story goes that Jesus said on the cross, because you have repented, now you will be with, today, you will be with me in paradise. So was that a belief of the thief that he will go and that that took him there? We don't know because he died and never came back to tell any story. But the story goes on to say that Jesus came back and said, hey, listen, you know, I'm here, but believe in me and you will join me also in paradise. Hey, where do you stand with faith? Do you have faith that the thing that you're praying for, the thing that you prayed for this morning, this afternoon, this evening, the thing that you're praying for now is going to materialize? And is that it going to, is it that it's going to materialize because of your faith or because of what you're doing or because it is predestined, predestined to happen? I don't know. P me? DJ Kevin Stew? I don't know. So I can't tell you whether or not to believe, whether or not to have faith. This is why that thing called that personal walk, that's why it's personal. I don't know about them, you know. Anybody who tell me that we can't do it, they told them that we go hard. As we jump into our musical therapy, we kick off things with the zone of Hezron. The track is called Man on a Mission. Thank you to my segment sponsor, McNeil Trucking. They're licensed and insured movers. With McNeil Trucking, you're in good hands. Give them a call today, 954-406-9740. That's 954-406-9740. McNeil Trucking, you're in good hands. Tell them DJ Kevin Stew sent you.
get out the way I'm coming for my slice of the cake Different. Or soon my things will be missing, missing, missing. Ain't gotta say, ain't gotta say, can't find no work. This is the sound of my said J Ball. Oh, God knows it hurts. Just can't find It's no called job. wishing, wishing. I can't pay my rent. Bills are overdue. No matter what happens, got to push on through. I'm willing to work. For the things that I want and need I'm up and running I'm ready to proceed But life throws you lemons So you make lemonade Life throws you curves You gotta know how to swerve So I wish you, wish you, wishing That things could be different Right now what's saving Is missing, missing, missing I ain't got a thing can't find no work Though I try so very hard God knows it hurts Got to get a job Can't pay the rent Bills are overdue But no matter what happens I've got to push on People People Are people Son of AJ Brown, to live their life lead singer of Third World. This track is called People Are People. If I just want to be your everything Forever for those lips of wine Build my world around This is Joanna Marie And it's all about DJ Kevin Stew On the night shift Hmm, you feel for some stew? Check out Kevin Stew Thank you, Joanna For so long
track right there mood right now what's the mood that you're in right now Giving you love's in need of love today. And it's so true. At the end of the day, love conquers all. It debunks myths. Conquers theories. Because hate going 
creates bridges where there are precipices to cross. Tradition of never found me a girl. This is how I leave you for tonight and this week on the night shift to DJ Kevin Stew. Wanna thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your contributions. Thank you for your feedback. On uh, Saturday. I'll be on Reggae Global Radio for the Saturday Stew at 8 p.m. Eastern. Come bubble up and simmer down with me. If you can't, I'll be back here on Monday. Community and finance. On the night shift to DJ Kevin Stew right here, KevinStew.com and affiliates. But I do encourage you to look out for members of your community and to remember your community is not just the development that you live in, but it spreads far and wide. So those that you pass on the bus, on the plane, the boat or the train, whether you walk, ride or drive, these are members of your community. Do something good for one of them today because you never know who's going to do something good for you tomorrow. My name is DJ Kevin Stewart, so I like to do it to you, for you, and with you every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday right here at 10 p.m. Eastern. Night shift to DJ Kevin Stew on KevinStew.com. Yeah, I never found me a girl to love me like you do. But I have faith that there is more. Thank you once more to my segment sponsor, McNeil Trucking. With McNeil Trucking, you're in good hands. They're licensed and insured movers. Just go ahead and give them a call, 954-406-9740. Tell them DJ Kevin Stew sent you. Thank you, McNeil Trucking. Son of Ambelik in the background. This is how I part company with you for tonight. Y'all take care and be safe. Be good. But if you can't be good, don't be afraid to be good at it. We'll catch up again real soon, okay?
Good, good morning, good afternoon, good day to you wherever you are in the world from right here in South Florida. I bid you all a pleasant good night. Yes, my people, check out I Red Funks on Reggae Global Radio every Saturday at 8 p.m. With Kev Stew, we all give you a pre-life. Brand new! Good for you! Kick it like a ball if you don't see a dance hall. You hear that? Greetings and salutations, one and all. You're invited to tune in to the Night Shift with DJ Kevin Stew. It airs on Mondays with Community and Finance, Tuesdays with Healthy Love, and Wednesdays with Real Talk from 10 p.m. to midnight Eastern Time. Come spend some time interacting in the stew pot where we keep things bubbling and wind down in musical therapy. The Night Shift with DJ Kevin Stew is on kevinstew.com where you're encouraged to have acceptance through enlightenment. Imagine having our own Caribbean center. Imagine a museum highlighting our history and the contributions of Caribbean people to the world. Imagine being able to visit and learn about the islands we call home in a place where our kids can see and feel their cultural heritage. You can make this vision come to life. Help us create this first of its kind space that all Caribbean people can be proud of. Your contribution to Island Space Caribbean Museum will help this dream come true. Visit islandspacefl.org slash GoFundMe. Visit islandspacefl.org slash GoFundMe. Visit islandspacefl.org slash GoFundMe and donate today.